Good morning, children. In the previous class, already we have discussed about the photosynthesis and the materials that are required for photosynthesis. In that, already we have discussed about the importance of water and the importance of air. Today, we are going to discuss about the importance of light in photosynthesis. So, light and photosynthesis. So, so already I told you there are around 300 years in the past different scientists they are working to know what are the different types of materials that are required for photosynthesis. Visualize and we came to know that light is also an important factor for photosynthesis. A Dutch scientist known as Jan Ingenhaus in 1779 he noticed that in the presence of light, the green plants they release oxygen gas. Only in the presence of sunlight only, oxygen, oxygen gas is produced by the green plants. Okay, children. So for that, he has conducted an experiment with the aquatic plants. So the plants that are present in the water, those who are living in the water, are called as aquatic plants. One such example is hydrilla plant. That is a submerged plant. It will be present inside the water. Can perform photosynthesis. So, Indian house, he has used hydrilla plant as his experimental material. And he came to know that in the presence of sunlight, the gas produced by the green plants are equally oxygen gas. That is the reason why photosynthesis is also known as the basic life process. Because you know, oxygen gas is the life supporting gas. It helps to survive. That's why it is called life supporting gas. And photosynthesis is the only life process which produces oxygen gas. Okay, children, there are several other scientists. They, are, they have conducted experiment with the light. One such scientist is Angel Man. He detected the point of maximum rate of photosynthesis. He has taken green algae as his experimental material and he found that what Indian horse has found in the presence of light, the green plant that produce oxygen already, Indian horse has already told. So Angel Man, he has taken green algae and he has taken different colors of light. Already children you know Light is a part of electromagnetic radiation. Light is a part of electromagnetic radiation. That means it has different types of rays are present. It has X rays, gamma rays, beta rays, okay, ultraviolet rays, visible rays, and infrared rays, radio waves. But fortunately, the dangerous rays or gas, uh, rays that are present in the sunlight which has very low wavelength and high energy. There is a relationship between the wavelength of the light and the energy present in it. Different rays of light will have different wavelength. Depending upon their wavelength, they have different level of energy. Okay, children, we are discussing about energy. Different scientists, they have conducted experiments so that how energy is required for release of oxygen during photosynthesis. Because already you know that when you take food, the food is oxidized. Food means what? It contains carbohydrates, fats. In the previous class already I told you, different type of nutrients are there like carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals and water. Among them, carbohydrates and fats, they, have, they are called energy giving food materials. That means when we take carbohydrates and fats, we get energy. Carbohydrates and fats are nothing but, they are carbon dioxide and water, they are present. So glucose when it is oxidized, in the presence of oxygen, when oxygen is used to break the glucose, it produces carbon dioxide and water. So when 
energy is produced when carbon dioxide and water are produced and oxygen is used all. It can be reversed. That means for the synthesis of glucose, carbon dioxide and water are used and oxygen gas is released. For that, definitely energy must be utilized. So, from where this energy comes from? This energy is actually comes from the sunlight. Because you know children, sunlight is the ultimate source of energy for any ecosystem. Okay children? Sunlight is the ultimate source of energy for any ecosystem and on the earth, biosphere is the largest ecosystem. Biosphere is the largest ecosystem. What is biosphere? The places on the earth where life is possible. Okay, children. So, if life is possible on the earth, what is the ultimate source of energy? Sunlight is the ultimate source of energy. And already I told you, children, sunlight is a part of electromagnetic radiation. Fortunately, different harmful radiations like X-rays, gamma rays, beta rays, ultraviolet rays, etc. They are actually reflected back into the atmosphere. Only the ultraviolet rays are actually absorbed by a blanket over the planet Earth that is called ozone layer. Ozone layer will absorb the ultraviolet radiations. Only the visible rays and infrared rays they reach up to the Earth's crust. And infrared rays, again, it goes back, reflected back into the atmosphere. But the visible rays, whose range is around 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. Okay, 400 to 700 nanometer. Nanometer is the units of wavelength. That is being observed by different objects on the Earth. Okay, children. And you know that there are seven different colors are there in the sunlight. You know, rainbow, rainbow colors, vib, vib, gyor, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. There are seven colors are there. There are seven colors are there in the sunlight. And it was Angel Man who conducted experiment with green algae as well as purple bacteria, oxygen sensitive bacteria, purple oxygen sensitive bacteria when he has taken in his experimental material, he observed that these bacteria, they get accumulated in the rays of light, red and blue color light. So, red and blue color are almost, almost useful for photosynthesis. So sunlight is essential for photosynthesis. In the sunlight there are seven colors. Among the seven colors, blue rays and red rays are actually useful for the process of photosynthesis. You might be, there is a doubt, you may have some doubt. Leaves are green in color. Sir, leaves are green in color. Whether green color light is useful for the photosynthesis or not. Okay, children. Green color pigments are useful because it is visible to us. Green color is visible to us. Green color is visible to us when a, a particular colored light gets reflected. The reflected light will fall on our eyes and we can able to visualize that color. So that means the chlorophyll pigments are green because they reflect green color light. Okay, children. So the color that is observed is only useful for the plant for photosynthesis. The color that is reflected back is not at all useful. So now tell me, children, whether the green color light is useful for photosynthesis or no photosynthetic activity will take place in the green color light. Which is correct? Yes. Green color light. In green color light, photosynthesis cannot take place. So for, for photosynthesis, 
green color light is not useful. Which color lights are useful? Only the blue and the red color rays present in the sunlight are useful for photosynthesis. So Engelman, he has conducted experiments and he told that blue and red color light helps in maximum rate of photosynthesis. Okay children. So now we discuss the experiment conducted by John Indian Fox. He has conducted an experiment and he told the world you know oxygen gas is produced during photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight. To conduct this experiment children, we have to follow in the previous class already I told you, we have to follow certain points. Number one is the aim of the experiment. Next one is what are the apparatus required, requirements for conducting that experiment. Next, equation, photosynthesis, because we are discussing photosynthesis equation, you have to write overall equation for photosynthesis. Next, you have to carry out the procedure of the experiment. Once you have completed the procedure, then we will observe. That is our observation. What will observe from that experiment? Then at last we will come for an inference or result of the experiment. So children, what is the aim of our experiment? Our aim is to prove that oxygen gas is produced during photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight. Okay children, next step. For this experiment, what are the apparatus required? For this experiment, we need a glass beaker, 500 ml beaker is up. Okay, then we have to conduct set, collect certain hydro plants, which are aquatic plants, which you can easily find in the ponds or in the canal. Hydro plants. We will cut the hydro plants into small pieces and we will put them in the beaker. In the procedure, I will tell you once again. So, what we need? A beaker. Next, we will collect hydrilla plants. Then, you will take a glass funnel. Okay, children. Next, we will take a test tube. Okay. Next, we will take some incense stick, that means group stick, or a match stick also you can take. So, these are the apparatus required. See, a beaker, hydrilla plants, glass funnel, Water, obviously you have to take water because we are taking aquatic plants. Next, we test you and a max stick. Next, equation for photosynthesis. What is the equation? Already you know, photosynthesis, photosynthesis equation. 6 molecules of carbon dioxide plus 12 molecules of water in the presence of sunlight and sunlight gives rise to 1 molecule of glucose, 6 molecules of oxygen, and 6 molecules of water. Okay, children. Next, we will discuss about the procedure. What is the procedure of your experiment? So, as shown in the figure, you can see you have to arrange the apparatus. You will take a glass funnel, sorry, you will take a glass beaker, you will take a beaker. Okay, and you will put water in it. You can take cold water or tap water, you can take no problem. Okay, then when the hydro plants that we have collected, we have to arrange them, arrange the sticks of the hydro plants in the beaker and we will cover the hydro plants with a glass funnel. With a glass funnel. Okay, so then, then we will take a test tube, we will take a test tube and we will fill the test tube with water. Fully we have to fill with water. Okay, children, and close the mouth of the test tube and put it upside down and put it on the stem of the glass funnel. Okay, children. So, to provide carbon dioxide, dissolved carbon dioxide in the water, 
we can take some salts of carbonates or bicarbonates and we'll put them in the water. So that more and more of carbonates already you know that carbonation is required for photosynthesis. So the digital carbonate, if it is an aquatic plant, aquatic plants they get carbon dioxide from the dissolved in the water, not from the surrounding. Usually the terrestrial plants they get carbon dioxide from the surrounding. But in aquatic plants they get carbon dioxide which is dissolved in the water. So if, because you have taken the pond water or the tap water, so to increase the carbon dioxide concentration in the water, you can take some carbonates or salts of carbonates or bicarbonates. Say sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate you take and you can put in the water. Okay children, the same setup you will take in duplicates. That means two sets you will take. So you will take two beakers. We will take hydrogen plants in both the beakers, we will cover them with the glass funnel, then you will take two test tubes filled with water, each one will put over the stem of the glass funnel. And we will put bicarbonates, salts of carbonates or bicarbonates in the water in both the beakers. One set of you will take and you will put it in the sunlight and the other one you will put in a dark room. Okay, children. After three to four hours, we will observe that there are some gas bubbles. They come out from the leaves of the hydella plant. Okay, children. We will observe that there are gas bubbles that comes out from the leaves of the hydella plants, and slowly they get deposited at the top of the test tube by displacing the water. Water gets displaced and it is filled with some blank. You, you cannot say that that is gas, but because gas is produced, air bubbles are coming out and they get deposited, so there must be some gas at the top of the test tube which displaces the water, which are which was present in the test tube. When sufficient amount of gas is collected, then very carefully by closing the by closing the mouth of the test tube with your thumb slowly you just remove the test tube and make it upright okay children next you will take a group stick you will burn it and you will put up so that only going incense stick or the match stick will be there and very carefully, we just show the glowing stick near the mouth of the test tube and slowly remove your thumb. You will see that the glowing stick grows vigorously. It will burn vigorously. Understand children? What does it mean? Why the burning splinter or the incense stick or the mass stick burns vigorously which gas helps in burning obviously oxygen gas so what is your observation the going incense stick incense stick means group stick burst into flames that means burns vigorously so from this what is your inference we will come to that this shows that the gas that is produced during photosynthesis is oxygen gas, which gas? Oxygen. And it occurs only in the test tube where, which was exposed to the sunlight. So in the presence of sunlight only, the hydrogen plant, they produce gas bubbles, which was finally found that the gas that is produced during photosynthesis is oxygen. Whereas the another setup that you have kept in the dark, there you will find very less number of bubbles will be there and the gas collected at the top of the test tube also is very very less. That means in the absence of sunlight, photosynthesis will not take place. Understand general? So the light is essential for photosynthesis already, already you know. In the presence of light only, oxygen.
oxygen gas is produced. But in the dark, in the absence of light, oxygen gas is not produced by the green plants. So, in the presence of light only, photosynthesis takes place and oxygen gas is released. Did you understand, Silen? So, oxygen gas is released or produced during photosynthesis. Who has told that? Who has conducted this experiment? John Indian Hodge, who is a Dutch scientist. Okay, children? Thank you.